Hi everybody. In this video, what I want to talk about is situations where we have two continuous valued covariates or predictive variables that are of interest to some sort of analysis. And so previously I've done a video where we've talked about thinking about how these relationships with continuous variables, sort of what they mean sort of biologically, and so think about the nature and form of those relationships. Uh, in this particular video, what I'm going to focus on is situations and considerations about whether we include interactions be between sort of two continuous value covariates. So if we start off with uh, something uh, relatively simple, suppose we just have one continuous valued covariate, then if we just sort of sketch out what we're thinking with that sort of relationship, so we have some sort of response variable, we have our predictive variable um, there. What we're saying is that we expect some sort of relationship, it may be positive, it may be negative. Uh, or if you write the sort of equation for that, what we're saying is that our response uh, perhaps has some sort of intercept term, and then we've got the beta 1, x1, and you know, some sort of error term which we won't sort of worry about at the moment. But what we're saying is when we have a, a single predictive variable of interest, we expect with this sort of model, uh, some sort of regression model, we're saying there's some sort of linear relationship between our response and that predictive variable. Now when we have a second continuous um, covariate of interest, we have the same sort of relationship, but now it's also for x2 uh, instead of x1. So our regression model, we now have this sort of additional term uh, in there. And if we think about what that may look like, we could do the second plot. Or alternatively, what we have is we've got this other dimension here now, which we're going to label uh, x2. And so what we're saying is that there's also a relationship between y and x2 as well. And what that does is that we also have this line now in this other direction, in this other dimension. And so what we really have now is a, a 3D plot of some sort of relationship between y, x1, uh, and x2. So instead of having a regression line, like we started off with, when we have two continuous value covariates, what we have is, is a regression surface, or, or some sort of plane. Now it may be easy to visualise uh, the book. So what I'm saying here is that if I've got a situation with two continuous variables, then x1 will be one dimension, and x2 is another dimension. So if x1 has a relationship uh, on the response but not x2, what we're saying is that we have the book on a certain angle. If x2 has a relationship but x1 doesn't, then we've got the book tipped in the other angle. And then if x1 and x2 both have a, an effect on our response, we've got a uh, our plane uh, is on the angle in both dimensions. Now, a key thing here is that this, this plane, this surface, is still flat. Okay, so we just have x1 and x2 have an effect um, with no interaction term. Now, what we're saying is that this regression plane is still flat, but it's just on a certain angle relative to um, x1 and x2. An interaction term, what that does is it, it takes our regression plane and puts a twist in it. Okay, so instead of having a flat relationship, what we're saying is that now the effect of x1, for example, on our response is different for different values of x2 and vice versa. Now, in some situations, that's not going to be reasonable. Okay, so some people advise that you shouldn't have interactions between two continuous uh, variables. But other times it might make sense. And so having this sort of geometric interpretation of what's going on can be quite useful to try and decide, should I include an interaction between two variables or not? Now to help you visualise that, I have put together a bit of a tool that's available through the, the Proteus website. So the URL, uh, the link for that, uh, is in the description of the, the post associated with this video. So you can go there and, and have a bit of a play with that if you'd like to. Uh, but one thing before we sort of move on, or or finish this video, is in ecology oftentimes we think about or you know, theorize that species have an ecological niche. Okay, so that they have this, this combination of environmental conditions where they like to be and that under different conditions they don't like it so much. Okay, so they have some sort of 
preference for certain environmental conditions. Now, one way of describing that mathematically is if we just have a situation with just a single variable uh, for a start. So we have our, uh, again, x1, and we have our response, whatever that happens to be. One way of, of describing this idea that there's kind of this sort of optimal set of conditions for a species is with some sort of perhaps quadratic type relationship. Okay, or some sort of you know, concave down type relationship. And so what they're saying is that, you know, in this range here of x1, the species likes those conditions with a higher value for the response, whatever it happens to be. But as we go to different uh, or more extreme values for x1, the species doesn't like that so much, so our response variable goes down. Now, if we have a second continuous variable, which we also think uh, is important in a similar manner, so perhaps we also have uh, a second variable here, x2. Oops. Um, and again, we had that sort of quadratic form to that. That's really hard to sketch out uh, in this sort of three-dimensional plot type situation. But what we can do instead is think about it, now let's look from the top down. Okay, so let's create basically a map um, of our response variable relative to x1 and x2. So I'm just going to change this axis now from y to x2. And if we have the situation, we have sort of two quadratic relationships uh, on our uh, response variable, what that creates is a surface, again it's just a surface, but it's our surface, we've got sort of a twist in, but sort of a quadratic twist in both directions, so it's hard to describe there. But we can do the map, and essentially what that means is that if we have two quadratic relationships, it creates these series of concentric sort of ellipses, okay, where the, the shape of those ellipses will be de determined by the strength of these quadratic relationships. Um, and the key thing is that in this situation here, if we have no interaction between x1 and x2, then the orientation of these ellipses is that the, this orientation in this, what we call the minor and the major axes of these ellipses have to be um, in line with the axes of x1 and x2. So it's got to be sort of square on that graph. And in the mathematical form, what we're saying is that we have this relationship here. So we've got some effect, and we've got x1 squared. And then we also have uh, an x2, and then also an x2 squared. That gives us that sort of relationship. Now, if we want to have the ability to twist those ellipses, so suppose if we are looking at this as a, an environmental, or a map of the environmental effects on our response, suppose we actually think that yes, there's some sort of interaction here, but we actually think that that um, relationship between uh, the two variables on our response sort of has a bit of a twist in it, so it's varying for different sort of combinations of x1 and x2. Now we can get that, by including an interaction between x1 and x2. Okay, so if we also include in our model some sort of interaction, okay, what that does is it allows us to have those ellipses on an angle. So it gives a bit more flexibility in terms of doing analysis for what that relationship may actually look like. Because if we don't include that interaction, then the orientation of those ellipses has to be exactly in line with our x1 and x2. Now, that may not be completely obvious to people. I didn't realize it until relatively recently, just by start thinking about these sort of geometric interpretations of what um, these sort of interaction effects have uh, on our analysis. And so again, you know, with that sort of little web tool that I've developed and made available there through the Proteus website, you can play with this sort of quadratic type situation yourself to sort of help visualize what that actually means in practice. So there you have it, that's my, my tips. Uh, when we think about including interactions between two continuous covariates, it can help to have that sort of geometric um, interpretation of things, or to think about it in terms of the effect in some sort of environmental space or environmental map um, of our response variable relative to our predictive variables. Hope you found that useful. 
Uh, let us know if you've got any comments or thoughts about this video or if you've got any other ideas about videos that you'd like me to present and develop, let me know. Uh, until then, have a good one. See ya.